Uh, hi guys, in this video I will show you how I set up this glamour shot for a video that I did. Uh, this can also be used to take some great photos even though we're not using flash photography. Uh, like always, start with a clear idea of what you are trying to achieve so that you have uh, something to aim towards. Uh, I want this shot to have high key lighting with a lot of shine and golden colors. Uh, I want this to look glamorous and perfectly clean. Now our location is not the best for the setup simply because it has a crazy mix of uh, a little bit of everything uh, which we needed to actually achieve some of the other setups that we did on that same day. So we started the work uh, even before we showed up on this day by getting all of the right props and also the perfect outfit for the shot. Uh, I gotta give all the credit for that to my production designer Isabella. Uh, she really found everything that would make this shot work, even though we didn't have anything left in the budget for production design. Uh, the camera I use for this setup is the Panasonic GH4. But while I'm just framing my shot, I first use the Lumix Vario f2.8 uh, 12-35mm lens. But it was right away obvious that this lens is too wide. Uh, so next I switch to the Lumix Vario 35-100mm to lens that is also f2.8 uh, just so that I'll be able to get in even closer. In a situation like this where the location doesn't have the same look as the concept, it is always best to show as little of the location as possible. So I threw on the Metabone Speed Booster to get an even shallower depth of field and also I switched to an 85mm T1.5 cinema lens from Bauer. This allowed me to get a narrower field of view so only Diana, uh, our model, and a bit of the location is visible. Uh, plus, I opened the lens aperture up all the way and keep the background so out of focus that all you can really see are the uh, out of focus lights we have set up. Once I figure out the camera position and the framing, then I have Isabella work on the background. Always figure out your framing before you go doing detailed work on your location. Uh, otherwise, you just might uh, end up spending time set dressing something that will never even be visible in the final shot. Uh, we mainly just framed that door behind Diana where we hung those Christmas lights. The room on the other side of that door has huge windows that let in a lot of daylight. Uh, and to make those lights stand out in the shot, I first covered that door with black fabric. Uh, then Isabella tries to evenly spread out the few Christmas lights that we have available and those shiny beads. Both of these props cost us around $15 in total. But while Isabella is busy adjusting that, I also start setting up the lights. At first, I want to add some edge lighting to really separate Diana from the background, uh, but also to give a bright, shiny edge to her skin and that beautiful outfit she has on. Uh, this is easily done by putting two lights behind her that are aimed at her back. Uh, the further apart you place these lights from each other, the bigger that bright edge will be. Uh, I also put the intensity of those lights all the way up. Uh, you can see now how those lights create a white edge along her arms and sides of her face. Now, I am very careful, however, not to put the lights so far apart that they also light her nose. Uh, that would make her nose look bigger, which is definitely not what we want. For the key light, I knew I only needed one light that was positioned from the same angle as the camera, uh, but also slightly higher so it creates visible but short shadows under the nose and chin. This type of lighting is typical of what you would find in old Hollywood. Uh, this lights the model evenly and hides any imperfections while the short shadows define the face and can even make your models look slimmer than they really are. This is what I would call a typical starlit lighting uh, setup used in many films and photographs throughout the years. Uh, the light that I use is a square LED panel light with small diffusion on it to help soften the shadows a little bit. Uh, I mount the light on a C stand with a grip arm so that the stand is not visible in the shot. The key light and the soft box also add a lot of those nice reflections in our model's dress and that necklace which again creates that shiny glamour look that I'm after. Isabella found this fabric lying around that had this uh, velvety kind of uh, look and shine to it which she also hanged uh, behind those lights. It, already the shot looks pretty cool, but I noticed two things that can improve it even more. Uh, first is the halo in the upper corners of the shot, which is caused by those two edge lights in the background. Uh, another thing I feel that I can make this shot even better is if I add a star filter uh, to make that shiny dress even more shiny. Uh, you'll notice though that as I put on that star filter, the whole shot now gets 
really washed out. Uh, this is because those edge lights are hitting directly the front of the lens and the filter. The uh, best way to fix this is to use two flags to black those lights from hitting the front of the camera. You can see that as those flags are brought in closer to black those lights from hitting the front of the camera, uh, the whole shot uh, regains back some of its contrast. My final camera settings were ISO 200, uh, shutter at 1 200th of a second, and aperture at T1.5 on the Bauer 85mm lens. The last step is to adjust the colors a little bit. Uh, I do all of my editing and color grading in DaVinci Resolve. And now the same thing can also be achieved uh, in Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, but I feel like Resolve has more controls. Now here is the final shot. Uh, it definitely looks glamorous, even though we did this on a tiny budget with a cheap camera and only three lights. Uh, it's also hard to realize that we got this shot in the same location that also allowed us to get uh, these very different looking shots with Diana. If you are interested in seeing the next lighting tutorials where I will show you how I did these shots using affordable cameras and few lights and sometimes even no lights, uh, then make sure you subscribe and head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com where you can find more info on the gear that I used and also where you'll find my exclusive lighting tutorials uh, that show you how I got these shots done. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Do you want to see how to set up cinematic shots step by step? This set of cinematography tutorials gives you exactly that. Detailed information on the camera and equipment settings, light and camera positioning, including diagrams, and color correction. The Lighting Does in Natural Light shows how to work with available light. I will explain how to shape and control the sunlight to create different moods and looks. The great thing about working with natural light is that you can create stunning images with minimal equipment. It's also a great way to experiment and learn cinematography because you can shape and modify sunlight just like you would artificial light. The light modifiers I use are affordable to most indie filmmakers. Plus, I present do-it-yourself alternatives that make it possible to achieve these great looking shots on the smallest of budgets. This set gives you 12 lighting scenarios that will greatly enhance your films, music videos, commercials, and other video projects. By reproducing these 12 cinematic shots, you will not only impress your audiences and your clients, but you will also build a foundation on which you can experiment and develop your own creative shots. Reproducing the work of others and then enhancing it with your own ideas is the best way of learning. That is exactly how I learned. The Lighting Dozen tutorials are exclusively available on my website at tomantosfilms.com.